Welcome back, friends, to Max Q Barbecue. My name is Craig, and today we're going to start a series of videos on the things that I've learned running the Workhorse 1957 pit. Friends, today I have a bit of a surprise for you. I got a call from Workhorse Pits in Georgia this week wanting to confirm my address, and guess what showed up? The 1957 Custom Barbecue Pit Smoker Cover. Come on in here and take a look at this custom Workhorse 1957 smoker cover. First, you'll notice that it is custom cut to all of the shapes and appurtenances of the pit. Here we have the stack coming out from the smoke collector, cut in, sawn in, and a special little cover here for the stack as it's laid over. And over on this side, you'll see that it's custom fit to the offset and to the firebox over here on the right hand side. What a beautiful piece of workmanship. Got the logos silk screened right onto the front. And so this should keep the pit looking good throughout the year. Let's get this cover off of here and get the fire started so we can get our cook going. One of the first things that I learned after getting the Workhorse 1957 pit about the fire is the fastest way to get to cooking is to start my fire with lump charcoal. I found that when I started the fire with firewood splits, such as these, that it often added another 30 minutes to an hour before a good charcoal or coal bed was started. Getting it started with the lump charcoal speeds that process up and saves me over a half an hour of time getting the fire going. To start the fire, I have a lot of packing paper, this came in some packages this week, and I like to recycle and use this. And I'll take this packing paper and put it underneath our charcoal chimney starter. And then fill the chimney up with lump charcoal. you'll see I put a clock out here so that you can take an idea of how much time is between the times when I feed the fire and get the fire started, just to give you a little bit of time reference. So let's get this fire started. I have a little propane torch here. Just open this door up and light my paper on fire. And that's all it takes. Fire is on its way. However, it looks like it's going to rain today. So when we come back, you may see that I have to put up my canopy to keep everything dry. Oh, well, the cook must go on. As I said, the cook must go on. <laughs> One of the very first lessons I learned from the Workhorse 1957 is it doesn't take much fire to maintain the temperatures that we need for smoking meats. So the first thing I had to do was figure out how to work with a smaller fire. So I have firewood delivered to the house, and this is some oak firewood that we had delivered to the house. And what you'll notice is that firewood comes delivered to us at about 17, 18 inches in length. And most of it is in splits that are four inches by three inches in size. Now that might be great for a 1500 gallon or a thousand gallon smoker, but for a 1957 that's only 30 inches, 36 inches long in the cook area, that's a little bit much fuel for the fire that we need. So the first thing I do is I take the splits over to my saw and my uh, miter saw, and I just cut off and cut them down to about a 12 inch size piece. So that gives me one piece that's about five and a half, six inches long, and then another piece that's about 11 to 12 inches long. But even still, this piece being two by four in diameter or thickness is still a little bit much for the workhorse pit Put that on there, again, too much heat, too much fire. So the next thing I do is I bought this wood splitter 
and you find them on Amazon, not too expensive, but you can buy a little wood splitter, such as this one, and it's a very simple task to break these down into two by two inch pieces. These make really good sized splits for working on the 1957. About 12 inches long, two inches by two inches. So that's the first lesson. Some of you might be wondering, well, what do you do with all the little short pieces? Well, don't throw them away because they're really good pieces of wood for you to use when you're doing different kinds of smoke if you need low temperatures. For example, when I'm cold smoking sausage, I generally want to run the pit at around 150 degrees. I can actually maintain the pit at 150 degrees with this much wood about every 20 to 30 minutes. Got our wood split, ready for our cook, checking on our clock. It's been about uh, a little over, maybe probably 20 minutes since we uh, started our uh, chimney. And you'll notice our chimney is doing really, really well. And so now we're gonna go ahead and release the charcoal, lump charcoal into our pit. And we're gonna take some of our wood splits that we have and go ahead and start heating up our pit. Now this technique that I've been using is I usually build a little channel down the middle of the fire so the air can flow through. I try to put a split on either side. And let the air flow through the middle and through the pit. Now if this becomes too much heat, too much radiant heat, we had some uh, other of our channel folks that have posted a video on fire management where they put the sticks perpendicular to the coals to slow down the airflow and to slow down the heat. We're gonna try that technique in a later video, but this is the one I've been using and right now we're just trying to heat the pit up. So I'm trying to get more airflow and more fire going through the pit. And you can see how fast those splits uh, go ahead and, and get started. I'm gonna close this down so the air will start flowing through the pit and start heating up the pit. You notice the pit got a little bit of rain on it, a little bit of moisture on it. So imagine we're gonna need a little bit more fire to get this thing heated up. And don't worry, we have a vent up here at the top of our canopy so our smoke can actually go out through the top of our canopy. It's been about four minutes, five minutes since we closed the pit up. And you can see that the uh, pit is already starting to heat up. We're just at about 110 degrees on this thermometer and about a little over 100 degrees on this thermometer. So you can see the smoke is flowing through the pit and heating everything up. We're off to a good start. Another 15 minutes to shoot the up at our temperature that we want to start our chickens. Today we're going to be cooking at around 275 degrees. As you can see from our clock, another 20 minutes have passed and our temperature on our pit, on our upper grill is now up at about 215, just below 220 degrees. To keep the pit coming on up to the 275 degree temperature, I'm gonna go ahead and add another little small split. This is uh, probably about an inch and a half by inch and a half. I'm just gonna open up the side door here and I'm gonna slide it in on the side and then close it up, leaving the, the dampers, the butterfly wide open damper here wide open again. We're trying to get as much air flow and as much heat going to get the pit heated up. Notice that the water droplets haven't completely dried off yet. And I did dry off the uh, sidecar table. Uh, and I've got the thermal works thermometer here. I'll go ahead and get that turned on and started so I can start monitoring. I have the uh, temperature here to measure ambient and thermometer inside the pit to measure the pit temperature. And I got a couple of meat probes that we'll use later when we get our our chicken on the pit. A half hour has passed and it's time to add some more splits to our fire. I've got a couple of splits up here on top of the firebox heating up 
So what we're going to do is come over here and open up the firebox door. And we're going to slide these in, kind of push our coals to the sides to make a little channel down the middle. And I'll put a split on each side of the fire. And that should start pretty quickly. See, already started. Close that up. Folks, it's been about two hours now since we started the fire. And the temperature of the pit is holding at 250 degrees. Just wanted to point out that our ambient temperature today is 75 degrees. So 75 degrees. So it's a little bit cooler than it's been all summer. So I've noticed that it's burning the wood a little bit faster. So I just added another split. So that's three splits that are burning currently to hold the temperature at 275 degrees. Since it is cool outside and rain's coming down and it's very humid, we're gonna go ahead and add another split to the fire. Well, folks, the rain is not letting up at all. And yeah, the temperature on the pit's dropping a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, put some more wood in it. Uh, as you can see, it's about 20 after two now. There's our clock. And uh, we'll go ahead and put some more splits on there. See if I can get you around to the other side to get a little view of what's going on in the pit here. Right. A little bit of a chimney going there. Keep that, keep that temperature up. So, welcome to barbecuing in the rain, everybody. Always a lot of fun. Okay, our temperatures are running right around 200 to 225 right now, actually on our internal grill pipe thermometer, it says 232. We just had the lid open as we were basting the chicken with barbecue sauce, so the temperatures have dropped. At this point, our, uh, our chicken is uh, up to temperature. Our last thermometer probe on it was at 270 degrees, so the chicken is cooked. At this point, we're just trying to set some barbecue sauce and uh, pull it off. So we're gonna, we just paste it over the, the bone side with barbecue sauce, and we're just letting that uh, set. And uh, no more wood on the fire at this point. We're just gonna finish it out, and uh, we'll be done for the day.